My autosomal DNA results. 23andMe, Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, My Heritage. I also have a bonus at the end. You watch all the way through. This is my 23andMe DNA results for my maternal hollow group. It's J1B1A. For my paternal hollow group, it's EV13. Ancestry composition, I have 44.3% British and Irish. Spanish and Portuguese, 30.0% Spanish and Portuguese. Scandinavian, 7.5%. Indigenous American, 5.4%. Um, Senegabian and Guinean, 1.6%. Nigerian, 0.8%. Ashkenazi Jewish, 0.7%. Gahanan, Librian, and Sierra Leone, 0.6%. North African, 0.6%. Angolian and Congolese, 0.2%. Manchurian and Mongolian, 0.1%. My heritage DNA. My heritage DNA. We have Europe, English, 40.4%. North and West Europe, 21.1%. Scandinavian, 16.7%. America, Mesoamerican and Indian, 12.4%. Africa, North African, 5.0%. Sierra Leone, 2.6%. Nigerian, 1.8%. Ancestry results, Scotland, 20%, Spain, 17%, England and Northwestern Europe, 17%, Germanic Europe, 12%, Wales, 10%, Ireland, 6%, Indigenous Puerto Rico, 5%, Portugal, 4%, Senegal, 2%, Indigenous Americas, Yuktan Peninsula, 2%. Sweden and Denmark, 2%. Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples, 1%. European Jewish, 1%. Benin to go, 1%. Family tree DNA results. Europe, 89%. Western Europe, England. Wales and Scotland, 83%. Eastern Europe, Magar or Magyar, 7%. Americas, 5%. Which includes the Mara Indian, Central America, 4%. Mara Indian, Indies and Caribbean, 1%. Middle East and North Africa, um, is that less than 4%. North African, so this includes the Maghreb and Egypt with 3% and Middle East Sephardic Jewish at less than 1%. Africa, 2%, West Africa, Ghana, Togo, and Benin, 2%. All right, and this is my bonus um, that I added on. I don't know. You can just take it as, you know, a joke or, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, DNA companies, um, you know, I guess pay to you can get your DNA results or your autosomal data. But um, this is my her true heritage results and the closest ancient population 
in Europe that I descend from is the Visigoth. So we have the Thuringiae plus Saxon, 9.726%. Visigoth plus Thuringiae, 10%. Gaul plus Saxon, 10.19%. Thuringiae plus Frank, 10.2%. Visigoth plus Frank, 10.54%. Visigoth 11.81%, Frank 12.12%, Gaul 12.13%, Durgany 12.43%, and Saxon 13.52%. So with all that being said, um, the big takeaway with all this DNA um, from autosomal is, you know, they're different. Every single one of them is different. Um, you're not going to have the same results. You're going to have something similar, but not the same results. So, I mean, you can take it as, as it is. Um, and the big reason why I like um, hobble groups, such as the maternal hobble group and the um, paternal hobble group, is because it allows you to know um, where majority of your ancestors are. And you can get an understanding of how you were spread out. So, for example, as you can see, I have near 0% um, Balkans. I have no percentage of Balkans at all. And that's a huge issue because my paternal hobble group is EV13. Whereas my maternal hobble group, J1B1A, was a hobble group that was taken um, as slave women by the Vikings. So they would take these women um, that they would get from England um, and you know produce children with them. And this maternal hobble group originally comes from the Middle East, comes from Iran. So, or you can call it the you know Lesser Caucasus, part of the Caucasus. So, I mean, it's just, like I said, you know, you can take away um, what you will with these DNA results. Um, I, it's changed over time, especially with Ancestry. I used to have Cox's DNA, and it's just disappeared. So, and they claim, well, it comes from updates. Well, my thing is, how do you even have um, original autosomal if there's no 100% pure people? Especially the ones that have the Spanish, the high percentage of Spanish, like Ancestry.com. They have me at 17% Spanish, which I used to only have like 3 or 4% with um, Ancestry.com. But they have me at 17% and Portugal at 4%. Well, if you know Spain and the history of Spain, Spain was mixed populations from the Visigoths, um, the Ostrogoths. You know, the Romans, the Moors, the Black Amors, the Jews, the Phoenicians. What I was talking about as far as the different cultures of Spain. So Spain has a diverse culture shaped by thousands of years of occupation by different empires. The ancient Greeks, Romans, Moors, Celts, Carthaginians and Phoenicians who settled in the country all left their mark on the cultural heritage of the country. Religion and Christianity in particular is also an important factor in shaping the traditions and customs of Spain. But we know that they left their DNA results. These people left their DNA results. This, these um, lineages, these heritages, they all left their DNA results. Um, that didn't include the Black Amors, um, the black slaves that were brought from um, sub-Saharan Africa up to North Africa, up to um, the Iberian Peninsula. So, and what about um, the concept of the Jews? Um, so, the Jews claim that they came to Spain um, and they called it Sephirot. Now, see, this is... This, I don't agree with that. I don't think the Sephardim were from Spain. I, from my understanding, the two Sephars or 
This, the two books cities were in Iraq. So this is where I believe that um, Sephirah was located, was in Iraq. This, were, this is where Sephirah would have been located. And we see that most scholars believe that the Sephirim originally came from um, these two book um, cities. Sephar has been suggested as the location of the biblical Sephirim in the Old Testament, which alludes to the two parts of the city in its dual form. So it's talking about the two cities. This is taken from GR Driver Geographical Problems, Eretz Israel, Volume 5, pages 18 through 20, 1958. All right, so let's go to the book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 20. All right, so I use the Young's uh, literal translation with the Strong's. All right, so I need to do that for. All right, here we go. Obadiah chapter one verse twenty, and the removed of this force of the sons of Israel that is with the Canaanites unto Sepharad. And the removed of Jerusalem, that is with the Sepharad, possessed the cities of the south. All right, so we click on Sepharad, see the location of foreign deviation. Sepharad, a region of Syria. So that goes back to um, modern day Iraq because the Syrians would have um, had ownership of Babylon during those time they would have been the kingdom of Babylon of that area of the two sipper cities so there's no doubt about it um, that Spain isn't Sephirod so how the Jews would have came to Spain um, that's up to debate they could have came with the ancient Greeks um, for those that don't know the Jews were sold as slaves to the Greeks And sons of Judah, and sons of Jerusalem, ye have sold to the sons of Javon, to put them far off from their border. So, and that's Joel chapter 3, verse 6. Um, and I mean, that could be from, those Jews could have been from those Greeks, those Javanites, or Yavanites. We don't, there's no telling, because the Jews would have never came back to um, Jerusalem. They would have remained amongst the Greeks and they would have um, followed the Greeks as slaves or servants and served amongst the Greeks. Um, so there's no telling where, it, where in fact these Jews came from in Spain. Um, in the New Testament, we see Paul goes to Spain. Let's pull up Spain. Alright, this is Book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 24. Let's go ahead and pull that up. When I may go unto Spain, I will come unto for you. For I hope you go in going through to see you, and by you to set to be set forward thither. If of you first, in part, I shall be filled. So Spain in the New Testament wasn't called Sephirot. It was called Spania. Probably of foreign origin, Spania, a region of Europe. So yes, yeah, Spain is of Europe. So 
So, I mean, it just goes into the whole concept that Spain was, um, you know, a mixed culture. You know, it's it's had different people to come into land um, over times. And, I mean, this didn't even mention the Visigoths. So... So it was actually, they actually had a kingdom. So the Visigoths arrived to Spain from um, Pyrenees and settled in the middle of the, pen, of the peninsula. So a lot of these so-called Spanish people are walking around with Gothic um, DNA from these Visigoths and Ostrogoths also. And remember, it was the, the Goths that defeated the Romans so when did the Goths defeat a Roman army August 9th AD 378 and remember the Visigoths were a Germanic um, tribe. That's where they originally supposedly came from was was from Germania. And no, Germany was not called Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz was in Turkey, was not in Germany. And there's a lot of tribes of Germany. Let's see, ancient tribes of Germany. The Western German tribes consisted of the Marcomanni, Alamanni, Franks, Angles, and Saxons, while the Eastern tribes northern, uh, north of Danube consisted of the Vandals, Gippids, Ostrogoths, and Visigoths, the Alans, the Burgundians, and the Longbards are less easy to define. So... I mean, there was plenty of tribes in Germany. So, and these tribes scattered out through Europe, um, intermingling with different people. So, my point is, this whole European, like, the whole concept of, of autosomal DNA literally has to be taken with a grain of salt. Because we, had, we understand that cultures mixed in the past. So, to sit there and say you're 100% this, you're 100% that, I have. I don't agree with, especially when I see people with 100% Ashkenazi Jewish DNA, and I've seen plenty of them, I don't agree at all because, first of all, the whole concept of using Ashkenaz, which I'll pull up exactly where it was located at, This is where your Ashkenaz would have been located at. And they were right next to Ararat in the Bible. Yeah, come on. All right. Let's get this real quick before I end this video. And if you haven't done so already, if you like this content, um, you like this video, and you like the Bible, um, like the, you would, if you would like to know who the biblical people were, their DNA, like Y chromosomes and whatnot, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe um, to my channel, and make sure to hit the bell button um, so you don't miss my live streams, and you can ask me any questions. Um, I also take requests if you want me to focus on a specific group, like maybe the ancient Egyptians or the the Kermites um, of ancient Nubia, which got turned into Cush. Please do so. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter fifty-one, verse twenty-seven. Lift up, lift lift ye up, and is in sign in the land. Blow a trumpet among nations. Sanctify against it nations. Summon against it the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint against it 
an infant head, caused the horse to descend as the rough canker worm. So Ashkenaz, we see, was next to Ararat, which is East Armenia. So without any doubts, Ashkenaz was in Turkey. And it was the sentence of Japheth. And Javan was um, in Greece. Um, you have so-called Spain being Tarshish. Um, but I can also show that Tarshish was more than likely in Turkey also. I think it was the one I had before. Let me see if I can pull that back up. So Tarshish would have been in this location. That's why you have Taras. It was Tarshish. Um, so, but anywho, if you like this video, um, you know, let me know if you have anything. If you disagree with anything, let me know too. Um, I can correct anything, you know, that I might have said that was incorrect. I have no problem doing that. But the whole point of this is to show that, you know, autosomia is like literally you have to take it with a grain of salt. You know, there's some truth to it. And there's also it's like, well, we humans have been mixing and intermingling. How do you have a 100% pure isolated genome that, you know, they weren't intermingled with other people? So, all right. Thank you for watching.